Well, many of us still have the luxury of working from home and Zoom life has become a new normal for a lot of us. With things slowly reopening and mask mandates relaxing, our next guest says now is the perfect time to start freshening up some of our interpersonal skills. And he shared his thoughts with Bill. Here's that conversation. 2020 was tough and 2021 has been challenging. Hopefully with more people getting vaccinated, the global pandemic will be a thing of the past soon. Now's the time to start freshening up some of those interpersonal skills as we've grown accustomed to Zoom life. Our great friend of the show, former United States Marine and mental toughness expert Eric Rittmeyer shares some insights. Yeah, Eric, you're not going to be able to talk to folks in your boxer shorts anymore. You actually have to put pants on from now on, and that's just step one. Always good to see you. You know, it's now. funny. People <laughs> frown upon that, Billy. Why is that? And why can't I walk around with box? I don't understand anymore. What's this world coming to? <laughs> so we're getting ready to, to actually, and, and I don't know about you, but I think most people are pretty excited about I actually, both my oh, sisters and I have been fully vaccinated. I got to hug them, and that was a huge thing. So where do we start with when we start to see people for the first time? Yeah, you know what we're going to have to do, Bill, is we're going to have to, like, relearn how to do lots of things. And sometimes it's not even a matter of relearning. It's just learning, period, because even prior to the pandemic, we had some issues going on, right? I think where it all starts here is just having a great sense of humor, being goofy, being silly. You know, every time I love coming to your show, right? We just laugh. We have a good time. If everybody would just realize that laughter is the universal language, everybody loves to do it, let's get back to being silly and goofy again. We don't always have to be serious all the time. All right, I got that one down. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Check that one off. The interview's over. We're done. <laughs> I got 100% on this one. All right. So uh, have a great sense of humor is huge, and it's, I think that's for everybody. What's next, Eric? Names. Remembering and using names. I have a difficult time with this personally, Bill. I have a very difficult time remembering names, Bill. So what I do is, right, obviously it's not difficult with you, right, but with a lot of people, it's, it's hard to remember, but when we use somebody's name, it makes that person feel important. It's the most beautiful word in their language, right? Everybody wants to hear their name. We have to get good at trying to remember, number one, but then using it. And again, when, we, when we're able to connect with people, we use their names, they feel good about it, and it just makes us feel like you know they're listening to me, we're paying attention because you went so far as to remember my name. Not difficult to do, but it goes a long way. And you just said something there, and that one that leads to the next question. So if you're remembering their names, it makes them feel important. And since they feel important, they may share something with you. So you need to listen. Listening's important. There's a reason we were given two ears and one mouth, right? We're supposed to. We're All right, there's a dadism in there. <laughs> you snuck that one in. <laughs> I can't live without it, Bill. How am I going to come on here and not do something with a dadism? I have to. Right, but here's the, here's the problem as a society. And again, this is pre pandemic as well. We listen with the intent to reply, not with the intent to understand. So when we enter into these conversations, what a lot of people do is they're listening just long enough to formulate their reply. Once they have their reply, everything that's said after that becomes Charlie Brown talk, and then they wait for that microsecond of a breaking conversation to jump in with the reply. Then the person comes back. We listen just long enough to formulate. So we have to get much better at listening truly with the intent to understand that person. Was he talking? Oh, I'm sorry. I got distracted. <laughs> <laughs> you scared me for a second. Come on, don't say that to me. <laughs> All right. So, and then staying focused is is the next one, right? <laughs> yeah, distractions are everywhere. This makes me laugh, right? It's like when you go out to eat with somebody and they take their cell phone, they're like, oh, let me put this on vibrate. They put on vibrate, they leave it facing up, and the whole time you're talking, they're like this. Yeah. It's like, come on, like, it's not, it, you know, what's the sense? If you really, really want to make somebody feel important, if you really want to make them feel like your world is revolving around them, take the phone, turn it off, and stuff it in your bag. Leave it off the table, leave it in the car. We can't be without our phones for two seconds these days. When you tell somebody that they're more important than your phone, it's automatic likeness right off the get go. All right, I'm going to tell you something that happened to me last week, and it didn't go very well at all. <laughs> I was in a store. And the, the guy behind the counter was talking on the phone. So I'm patiently waiting him to finish the phone. He hung up. Before I could speak, the phone rang, and he picked it up. And I went, human standing here waiting to spend money. They're not here. <laughs> and he looked at me like I was nuts, but he put the phone down. Uh, yeah, you got to stay focused in there. 
And when you just went with that story, Bill, and you said a story, I thought you were going to talk about something being out in boxer shorts out in public. <laughs> so I'm glad to hear it was somebody was talking on their phone. I feel re I'm refreshed to know it was somebody's talking. On their phone. All right. What is your emotional vocabulary? What does that mean, pal? Yeah, so it's, uh, getting deep into our emotion, I call this a feelings vocabulary. So unfortunately, we just don't have these skills that allow us to properly assess our feelings. Mental toughness is all about emotional control. And when we're able to get control of our emotions and express our emotions, we're able to analyze conversations in real time. So we can pick up on people if they're happy, if they're sad, if they're angry, all these things. We can pick up on it, and then we can interact with that person based on how we assess their feelings. As humans, again, we get no training on this, so we're just like totally oblivious, like the guy behind the camera with a cell phone. Zero self-awareness, right? Just none. In our relationships, we have to get better at establishing this feelings vocabulary so we can connect much deeper with everyone we meet. Not just our deep relationships, people in the grocery store, everybody we meet, make them feel good. Goofy, be silly, connect with them emotionally. Yeah, and, and you're right, because we, we've all gotten to get the Zoom thing where we're not really you know, in touch with people. We're just kind of doing what we need to do. And so that, that human part is huge. Eric, I always learn something from you, buddy. Appreciate it. Me, me too, Bill. Appreciate the boxer shorts. Thanks for having me. I'll see you next time. Thank you, can Brad. see my pants. Don't stand up. All right, it's a pleasure <laughs> talking with Eric. For more information on Eric Rittmeyer, we'll post a link to our website later today at WTVR.com slash VTM. Now, I said I was not going to talk about wearing britches and that part of that conversation, but it's like they kept coming back to it. It's all I can think about. Yeah, that's number one as we as we kind of get back in person. But Eric always shares such great advice, Evan. He really does. And this is something that, you know, you'd think we've been, you know, interacting with people our entire lives. This should be fine. But after a year or so of not doing it, you got to kind of remember some of these things, some of these best practices and might as well, um, you know, use some of those tips and get yourself prepared as you get reacclimated, right? I, yeah. And I think a lot of it, the, the humor and, and being true to yourself and letting your sh true self shine through is, is a great nugget to, to keep in play. I think we've only just gotten used to being able to communicate this way. And so it, we will feel a little rusty going back in person for sure. You know, you came home and for, for many folks and then you were in your space, which was a whole different world to then share with folks you were having conversations with. So now you're going to go back into a whole different environment. I guess give yourself some, some grace on all of yep. that too. Absolutely. I know some folks are super excited, but for some of us introverts, we might need a, you know, a little bit of prodding before we feel comfortable going all the way back out there. So it's a good conversation. I feel like Eric has a little something for everyone to, uh, to learn. And he and Bill are so much fun to watch. They have so much humor together and, and great tips. That's the most important part. They really do. And I do find myself coaching myself, uh, just saying, slow your roll. <laughs> <laughs> slow your roll. It's if we have to remember it's if we're, we're re-entering in it in a different way in a different time. So just slow your roll, Jessica. <laughs> Very true. Slow your roll. Well, we're going to be slow back in roll. less than uh, two minutes, about two and a half minutes here. We're going to share our final thoughts on the show.